What's up guys? Welcome to day one of the advanced chicken coop build. So what we're doing is up here in the woods, I cleared out a little bit. We are going to be building a chicken coop with some homemade uh, sit panels or structurally insulated panels. And uh, we'll try out all the different flashing and methods that we'll later on be using for the garage with the in-law unit, the passive house, uh, standard house, uh, as well as we'll be using the same on the main house once we get to there. However, getting permits takes quite a bit of time because we do have a house that's here already that we have to um, get permission to remove. But in the meantime, we'll do this project and test out all the theories. So please come along, check it out, and uh, let's see how, get with, uh, how far we get day one. So this is what I've done so far. Didn't videotape this, but I will be recording more from now on. This area right here is a uh, 12 by 8. I'm going to go ahead and level this out a bit more. I purchased some uh, 3 quarter inch clean uh, basalt rock that I'll be laying down here, compacting it. And then uh, I'll get some, uh, I forget if it's called builder sand or construction sand that we'll put on top to get it even more smooth. And then I have some uh, blocks that I'll be laying down here for to hold the flooring. And let's go ahead and check it out. And here we are, putting all the things into play today. Just took the uh, EV Silverado. Picked up that three quarter inch uh, clean basalt. Also went to Home Depot and picked up some of these blocks. I got 12 of those. And if you saw the video where I did an EV conversion on this quad, then that is what we'll be using to get the uh, blocks and all the dirt or all the rocks up into the woods back over there. So let's start with the blocks. All loaded up for the first trip. Got some tools. Should go pretty well. Let's uh, see. Let's see if I can do a live drive up there. So I worked about four times coming up here. Fifth one. Uh, turns out I'm not a very good welder. My uh, hitch just came right off. So now we're on to wheelbarrow until this gets fixed. Finally got all the rock up here using the wheelbarrow and now I'm going to spread it out set up a laser make it pretty level and then we'll get some sand on top I now compacted the rocks uh, Fairly level, not super level, but now we got the contractor sand here. It's called C33, builder sand, contractor sand, whatever. And uh, next we're going to take some of that up there, spread it out, and uh, see if we can't get a really nice and level surface. I now brought up one cubic yard or about 1.3 tons of this uh, sand. Next I'm going to put a 2x4 on the side there, one here and then screed it and try to get it as level as possible. Followed by compaction and then we'll check the level again. Here's the platform. I built it. It's right now flipped upside down so I could put some flashing tape on the back that's because what's going to be in contact with the um, uh, cement blocks so that the moisture doesn't wick in and now i'm going to roll the tape through the magic of editing it is now in lined up pretty well it had to make uh, some small adjustments and it all dropped in we got tape underneath every single one of the um, the concrete blocks so I'm happy, moving on to sheathing. Then put a frame down of two by fours on 16 inch centers, followed by um, the Advantech subfloor, then two inches of insulation, 
then some Advantech X Factor subfloor. Now I just snapped lines all around half inch in because the uh, I a sips that I'll be building will have a half inch uh, overhang. So that will be that, and then lay down a bead of Lexan. Let's see if we have it here. Yeah, Lexan, and put down the sill seal or sill gasket. Put another layer on top of this. That's gonna be my sill plate. And now I'm gonna flip that upside down so that we'll have Lexan underneath and Lexan on top to fully stop any air from flowing through that. So we got the uh, sill plate on with a sill sealer underneath with Lexan above and beyond. Oh, excuse me, above and below the sill seal. That goes full length, 144 inches down that way. Then here on the eight foot section, this one is cut a little over half an inch shorter here so that this panel can slide all the way to the edge. This one will butt up against it. We'll have a hard section here that you can screw in. And uh, yeah, we got that perimeter all the way around. Another day done. Here's what I got so far. I took a OSB and glued it to with a Loctite PL300 to the um, two and a half or oh, two inch insulation foam and then sandwiched it with another board of OSB. Then I got three inch nails and nailed the pattern just to hold it together while the glue sets up. And I've done that to a bunch of walls. I built one, two, three, and a fourth one here today. And then straighten them out. You can see at the ends I have wood so that I can screw it together. So here we are on the outside. I got some structural screws here in the corner going through from through this board into the board that's right there. So holds it all together so it's real sturdy. Uh, I do have a gap here. Actually, this one's pretty good. I put it in some uh, glue there, but uh, I'll be filling that and then taping all the joints later on. Here we are with the first floor framed in. I had a minor uh, incident yesterday where I was at work. I had not removed this sill right here. And uh, since everything is so tight and it rained, this whole thing filled up with an inch and a half of water and it was not going anywhere. So good news is I know it's waterproof. Nothing was leaking out on the outside at all. But bad news is uh, the OSB, which is obviously not um, pressure treated or anything, was underwater for I don't know how many hours. So on the bottom, it seems to not have swollen up yet, but we will see what happens. Also, you can see the white over in this area. That is some of the um, PL300 that I put on top of the sill that might have leaked out a little bit. So we will have to do extra good work on the air and vapor proofing from the outside and inside later on. The next step for this project is to set the uh, second level here, which is gonna be another two inch sill right here for the panels to sit on. Then I'll start with the gable end here. It'll be shaped like that. Same on the other side and uh, start with the walls. So we got the second portion up, except for the end on both sides, and just put some insulation above to protect the inside from the weather, because it's raining every day, as you can see on the ground here. But yeah, pretty nice height and the ceiling. We got all the windows that just came in, so those will be uh, cut in later on. But yeah, I'm... I can't even touch the bridge beam, so that's pretty good. There we are. I have now framed out the majority of the building. And uh, what I'm doing now is I have put a second layer so that I have a cold roof. So a second layer of OSB up on top. It's the Advantech uh, roof and uh, or actually zip system roof. 
And then I have some air gaps in between, some stri stripping underneath, similar to here. So there's gonna be a filter here just to let air come through and circulate, and keep it cool. I noticed that the window is gonna be mounted too low, so I'm glad I just did one. Gotta bring it up and um, yeah, on to the next.